All right, this is a little valve amp I knocked up for me uh, workshop. It's a couple of EL84s running single-ended stereo amplifier. There's uh, some mid-70s Soviet-made military spec long life 6N1P-EV dual triodes as the uh, driver stages. No fancy configurations, they're just standard grid drive to grid drive to grid drive. The EL84s are running as true pentodes. Uh, grid 2 is just uh, biased to about 260 volts and then held there with a large capacitor. Uh, about 26 decibels of negative feedback being applied to the cathode of the first of the input stage valves. <coughs> It makes about 4 watts per channel, it is a lovely sounding little lamp, uh, I'll just start it going here. I could listen to that all day, I really could. Um, so yeah, anyway I built this from a workshop, it's uh, running a set of, if we pan up, a couple of meters away on each side I just got a set of Wharfdale Diamond 9.1s uh, it runs them absolutely beautifully I mean I don't really want it particularly loud in here uh, it's, it's my workshop after all so I just wanted a bit of music um, just purely built this uh, I was on eBay one night and randomly banged into a set of single-ended output transformers made by variable voltage technologies VVT they make EI cord power and output transformers for valve amplifiers they're a British company make some very nice transformers I think these had like a starting bid of about £10 well I put the starting bid on and no one else put a bid on so with postage I got a used stereo set of output transformers for about 15 quid, which is incredibly rare I've watched on eBay since and uh, even old particularly battered ones you know sort of low quality ones out of old radios and stuff seem to fetch an awful lot more than that so I have no idea how I managed to get them for that price that night but I did and I'm very glad I did because they make an incredibly good sounding little amplifier so well pull the top off this anyway we'll just have a little look inside get a few voltages and uh, yeah, I'll just have a little talk about what's in there. So this is what's inside the amplifier. As you can see there's plenty of space spare in there. The, uh, the valves and valve sockets are punched through the lid and the components are just tacked on to the bottom of the valve sockets. Not a particularly neat job, but <clears throat> you know, workshop amplifier and all that. So yeah, it doesn't really matter too much. Output transformers, uh, as you see EI cord, just single ended, they got tapped secondaries on them. Um, I'm using the 4 ohm tapping, I'd have liked to have used at least the 8 because obviously you get better, better high frequency response. The more of the output winding you use, but the speakers I'm using just didn't allow that really. <coughs> uh, power transformer there this is massively overrated for this amplifier it's rated about 3 amps on the 6.3 volt winding and uh, over 300 milliamps on the 250 volt winding uh, the heater supply is rectified a couple of capacitors on it as we go along there's a few more on here I think somewhere which are also filtering it Power supply consists of a pass transistor for the HT. There's about 340 volts once it loads up of uh, raw DC. I only want 300, so I've used the opportunity to run a capacitance multiplier type circuit. It gives very quiet DC output for the whole amplifier. And there's also just a basic current limit in here, so if one of the output tubes does go, uh, rather than taking the power supply out, the power supply will shut down, yeah, which is always a useful feature. Uh, so, if we look at the amplifier, we can see that's where our two, these are our two EL84s, this end. Uh, the signal comes in, this is the first valve, uh, 
So it amplifies, <clears throat> our signal inverts it, the second stage again amplifies and inverts it. Uh, it's irrelevant but obviously you just have to, it can, it can be easy to forget which way around you need to connect your output transformers for your feedback loop. Um, otherwise you end up with a giant oscillator if you end up applying positive feedback. So this runs about 26 decibels of negative feedback, which is only achievable with these little 6N1Ps by using two of them. Now, normally you'd, you'd probably just use a single 12AX7 and apply 20 dB of feedback, but there just isn't enough gain with these to allow you to do that. You'd need such a high input signal, it would be ludicrous. Um, so by using two of them, I've, I've actually got gain to spare with the 26 dB of signal. I only, I've only got a very low level signal feeding this thing and I can drive it to full output with just a little twist of the volume pot. But uh, yeah, we'll just probe some voltages and uh, yeah, we'll see what everything is actually running at. It's been a while since I've had the top off of this, so I'd like to just make sure uh, the valves and everything is settled in okay and are all behaving and none of them are particularly too far out of spec so we'll just have a little probe around and see what we've got okay let's have a little uh, probe around it some voltages in here so if we go if we go here that's our raw DC, 335. Our output is 294. A little bit low at the minute, but uh, early evening, so I'm guessing there's a lot of load on the supply bringing it down a little bit. <coughs> so the grid 2 on our output valves, 260. 260 at the cap at the grid resistor. Let's see a 257, 258. So those two output valves are certainly right where they should be. <coughs> um, these capacitors here and here are additional stages of filtering uh, to stop the amp from motorboating. It did actually motorboat a bit when I first built it. I should have really put a second transistor on the power supply board and fed these to their own supply but you know I, d I didn't think about it till after I built it uh, you know it, it was bound to happen really trying to all run it off one supply without any additional filtering it, it was going to do that so these were tacked in afterwards so you can see there that's the DC supply for the second valve stage it's a bit lower than the uh, raw supply going in at 297 filter down to 270 and then the supply voltage for the very first input is, is right down to 230 so you can see we've got quite a bit of heavy extra filtering there but it, it really was needed um, if we probe one of the anodes on the input valve the, well the second the driver valve 169 there's about 5 volts on the cathode so there's about 164 165 volts across the 6N1Ps uh, top of my head they're running it about 3 milliamps per valve so 612 so Intel drawing about 12 milliamps off the supply uh, let's measure the cathode voltage on the EL84s want to be just here 9.86 and 9.7 so yeah close enough uh, I can't remember what we were I think we got about 330 ohms or something in total they're not they're not running particularly hot uh, the output transformers uh, for ECL 86 I think it's an ECL 86 it's like a triode pentode in one type valve you'd have found in an old telly for the audio output um, so they're slightly higher impedance than what an EL84 needs and then given that I'm running 6 ohm nominal speakers 
on the four ohm tapping it's raised the output impedance even further so I, I just don't need the current going through them so with them both having about 290 volts across them and only running the lower current I've actually got running um, let's work it out I'm pretty sure they're, they look like 330 ohms I can't bother to do the maths in the top of my head <coughs> What's the voltage on these again? 9.7, let's call it 9.8. So yeah, they're basically running 30 milliamps, so times that by 290. So yeah, the total anode and grid 2 dissipation only comes to 8.7 watts. Uh, so yeah, the cathodes in them are having an easy time, only you know running such a small amount of current through them the anodes and grids are having an easy time not dissipating anywhere near the full amount of power they should do um, so this amp should last quite a long time really having everything you know it's, it's running it sort of 70 percent what it could be running at um, but it sounds fantastic it is an absolutely brilliant sounding amp so again you know if we getting close to this so it might work better if I zoom and don't block the light. Mm, maybe not. Uh, like I said, it's not the best job in the world, but it's all right for the spare room stroke workshop amp. So, yeah.